tonight, <clears throat> tonight we're here to talk about the board of directors and the club. Um, every week you see the list of the board of directors that we show that when Stacy talks about the club. And, you know, some people, people are probably aware, they know who Stacy is, they know who I am because I introduce presentations every week, you know, that Jen does the trips. Um, but you may not know, newer people may not know who all of these people are or what the heck it is that, you know, a director at large does or, or the membership director or um, the conservation director. And so we thought that it would be good for people to get a better sense of that. We only are able to operate as a club because of various volunteers and when you start looking at our website and the stuff that we do, it is phenomenal. The number of trips, I think we've had more than 250 trips already this year. Um, I remember when uh, some years back when we had it as a goal to hit 200, but now we're just way over that. We have presentations every single week. We have um, conservation stuff. We have people, um, we have service kinds of stuff. We have all of the equipment that, that Stacy mentioned and, and we manage all of that and our budgets and all of those things. And a lot of that's behind the scenes and a lot of people may not be aware of it. We also need people to consider whether or not they want a position on the board. So we thought we would take a meeting and just tell you all all about it and let you meet people and let you know what's involved because really it's your club. And so, um, so that's basically what tonight's meeting's about. Thank you, Brennan. And now I'm gonna turn it over to Sue. Hi everyone, I'm the publicity director and I'm just gonna go through a couple slides and then you're gonna hear from the actual directors themselves. There are many opportunities to give back to the club. We've been around almost 70 years and thanks to all the people that have volunteered over those almost 70 years. And there's a lot of opportunities depending on your interests. Uh, you could coordinate a day activity or a trip. Jen was talking about those. Those are all volunteer led. You could help out as a volunteer. You could um, help out Fran and do a presentation. You could be an extravaganza helper. Mandy and Pat will talk more about that. You could be a booth schmoozer. Uh, that's, I coordinate those. You can do a conservation event and Deb will be talking about those. Or there are other events. We have some free bikes for kids uh, volunteer opportunities. In the past, we've partnered with REI, like a snow, helping people try on snowshoes or helping kids make s'mores. And we've also volunteered at athletic events as well, like um, races or ski races, things like that. Uh, you could be on a special committee. We've had people help with the future search, uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion committee. We've had reunions that non-board members have helped with. Or you could help on the board, which is what we're gonna talk about this evening. So we had this slide a little earlier, all of the board positions. We have almost everybody here tonight uh, to talk to you. Next slide. Just some general information about being on the board. Our board year runs from March 2022 to March 2023. So from March to March every year. Nominations are gathered in uh, the end of the year, November, December. So we'll probably start working on that soon. And our election is held in February at the annual membership meeting. We have a changeover meeting the first Monday in March where the outgoing directors will train the incoming directors and pass off materials and information. Our monthly board meetings are scheduled for the first Monday of the month. Unless it falls on a holiday, then we'll switch it to the following Monday usually from seven to 9 p.m. And they are held via Zoom, which makes it super easy. If it's a snowy, snowy night, you can just huddle in and 
hang out with your board friends. We have usually do one in-person social meeting during the summer, just as a way to get together personally. And attendance at over 50% of the board meetings will earn you a free annual membership after you serve your full board term. Some people have had uh, probably like a decade of free membership for helping on the board. All right, well, thank you, Sue. So with this, I'm gonna turn it over to our first board position, the directors at large, Barry. Okay, so uh, as you can see up there, I'm the first year director at large. We have two directors at large. <clears throat> This is, I think, the only position that has a specific requirement that directors at large need to have had one year board experience and three years of membership. And because of the responsibilities of this position, I understand why this is the case. The directors at large provide continuity of leadership and history of the board. So, for example, if, if the whole board were to decide to not continue the next year, then there'd be someone or some people on the board that would understand what had gone on in the past. So things that we hadn't yet completed or things we'd already investigated so we don't have to investigate them again. Uh, also, uh, separation of duties. One thing the directors at large do is check the, the bank statements and stuff like that. So we have multiple eyes uh, looking at the finances just to make sure that um, I totally trust Stephanie, but you never know with some treasurers, you hear uh, uh, cases a lot of, uh, of uh, things going awry. So it's nice to have multiple eyes on that. Uh, also, we work on special projects. So for example, right now I do the videos. I record the Zoom meetings and then I edit the videos and put them up on YouTube. So uh, that's not really a, a function of the directors at large, but it's something that needs to be done. It doesn't have to be someone on the board. So if anyone else wanted to volunteer, uh, that would be fine too. But also another uh, thing we do is to help uh, other directors if they need help, if they can't, um, if they don't have the time to do everything they need to do. And me personally, I've had four different, this is my fifth position on the board. So I do understand a lot of the different positions on the board. Uh, and also if a board member had to quit uh, halfway through the year or something, and we needed to, to backfill that position, we can do that. Um, time commitment really depends on, you know, what we're helping with and, and what's going on, but one to two hours per week is probably a good, uh, a good estimate. And what I enjoy about the position is to be a, a Jack or Jill of, of all trades to help out with a lot of different things and to just, kind of provide uh, assistance where it's needed. So uh, that's the director at large. All righty. Well, thank you, Barry. And I will point out that we have a couple of um, former presidents with us tonight too, Sue and Barry. Um, and right now I'm gonna turn it over to our conservation director, Deb Sweeney. Oh, hi, uh, I am Deb Sweeney. I am this year's conservation director. This is my first year doing this position. Um, it's a really focused position on the board and I think pretty easy to step in. I just joined the club like at Doug's camp out last October. So not been really in the club for long. Um, really all you gotta do is uh, coordinate some conservation events. I, they were told me four. I think I'm already have more than that, but you know, four you can handle. We were talking about things like buckthorn poles. We did an invasive um, uh, bittercrest pole. We've done prairie seed collections. We're probably gonna do some surveying for oriental bitter, bittersweet this winter. So it could really be anything you want to. Uh, sometimes I glom onto pre-established events like with Three Rivers or Friends of the Mississippi River. And sometimes I organize um, our own events. Um, you can help share info about other service opportunities. Um, you, uh, I try, if I see people are posting things, I'll try to encourage other people to post conservation trips. It's not like I have to hog them all. You know, this is something anyone can do. Um, and then just the other side of it is kind of just sharing information about nature. Not all the stuff that falls under conservation trip is 
like service. Sometimes it's more like naturalist kinds of stuff. So um, you know, tried to I led a wildflower walk. Some other members have led like winter tree ID or if you're into birds, you know, just kind of encouraging those kinds of things um, to be separate trips or just to enrich other things that we're doing like camping or whatever. Um, it's a pretty minimal time commitment. Um, I said two to three hours a month. That includes going to the meeting. I mean, it really doesn't take a whole lot of time um, to plan a conservation trip that is something that you like would like to do anyway. And then tell rovers to come with you it is not very onerous. Um, and to me, it's something I'm a Minnesota master naturalist and I love doing this kind of stuff anyway. So for me, it's uh, it's a great job. Um, and so what I really enjoy about it is really uh, sh the thing I like the most is sharing knowledge about our natural world. So we'll go to an event, we'll be talking, maybe um, whether it's a learning event or a service event, I always learn something from somebody. I always get to geek out and tell people about like plants or whatever, and they tolerate it. So um, I enjoy that part of the position a lot. So it's it's been a pretty easy lift and it's something, you know, one way that you can get on the board. All right. Thank you, Deb. And you're doing a great job this year. We really it been privileged to have you with us. No, thanks. All right. So the next step is events with Mandy and Pat. I know Mandy was on. I think I saw Pat too. Hey, there you are. Okay. Um, I can, uh, so the events director and events assistant, so that's me, Mandy Miller, and Pat Ryan, um, our top three responsibilities for being the events director and assistant um, coordinate the spring and fall extravaganzas. So what that means is we reserve the campsite in advance, we seek out volunteer cooks and trip and activity leaders, um, we communicate all the details to everyone, manage registrations, problem solve, answer questions. Um, really, it's, it comes down to just focuses on the extravaganzas. So time commitment, um, kind of like Deb was saying, this is a pretty easy board position um, up until the month or two before one of the extravaganzas, because then you do get pretty busy um, with all of that coordinating stuff. So um, during the extravaganza, we're also busy with problem solving. And then about a week after the extravaganza, there's a little bit of tasks you kind of have to tidy up. So you're a little busy just for that short time right around the extravaganza. Otherwise, this board position is pretty much a breeze the rest of the year. Um, things that Pat and I really enjoyed were planning the logistics of the extravaganzas, anticipating problems and doing all of that problem solving. Um, seeing the variety of events and activities that people come up with and make available. And then watching people, both um, the current rovers and prospective rovers, getting out there and participating and just really having fun with it. So that's, that's the events position kind of in a nutshell. Wonderful. Yes. And there were, what, 50 people who got to take advantage of the... Uh, Fall the fall one, yeah. yeah. I think we were in the 60s for the spring and 50 some people for the fall. So so it's it's a big thing and it kind of happens fast and and then you get a couple months of just ease through the remainder of the board position and then all of a sudden it happens again and and then you're kind of on the slope again. So but it's fun. All right, thank you. Yeah. All righty. Publicity. Well, hi, it's me again. <laughs> I've been the publicity director a couple of years now. The top three responsibilities are coordinating the publicity for the club events. So posting things on Facebook, meetup groups, and working with uh, different outdoor partners I'd mentioned like Midwest Mountaineering and REI. I coordinate the volunteers for the events to promote the rovers. I talked about the booth schmoozing um, in that earlier slide. We also have an intro show twice a year that I collaborate with the president on and 
we get volunteers to help with that too, helping with breakout rooms or a testimonial. Greg helped with one of those for me one year. I also manage the Rovers Apparel and Swag. You haven't heard much about that lately, but a lot of Rovers have caps and bike jerseys and um, sweatshirts, things like that. The time commitment, it really varies depending on what's going on. It's kind of a busy season right now um, with the uh, Midwest Mountaineering coming up. But on average, I'd say one to two hours per week. Uh, what I really enjoyed about this position, I get to work as a team with the other directors to make this club great. I'm always I'm like talking to Jen about trips and working with Stacy on this or that. And I work with the web administrator quite a bit. Um, so it's really a team effort. I love seeing the impact of the publicity. You know, it's my position and I struggle over that word of the publicity efforts. So many people say, oh, I've heard of you before. And this last weekend, someone said, oh, I found your uh, brochure from five years ago and thought I'd come and check you out. So thank you, Pauline. We loved meeting you on that hike. I also get to network with other outdoor organizations. So when I go to the, for example, Midwest Mountaineering at the expo, I'll start schmoozing with some of those other booth vendors and see what's going on. I might pass along some names to Fran for presentations. Uh, it's just a lot of talking and getting to know people and the volunteers too. Everyone is so excited. There's so much outdoor energy and I love being a part of that. All right, all right, wonderful. Um, and Next up is web administrator. I don't believe Jody's on, so Sue, did you want to talk? Well, I had mentioned I work with the web administrator quite a bit because one of the things she does is she's the artistic director in graphic design. Um, it's Jody, actually. I should have started with that. And I think Jody's had that position, I don't know, 15 or 20 years. Does that sound right for some of you that have been on the board for a while? Been yeah. there since 2000, I think. 2000? Yeah. Yeah. She's pretty committed. Yeah, uh, her sounds right. Oh, okay, thanks. Her top three responsibilities, she maintains the Rover's website and monitors and answers all the general questions that come in on that Contact Us page. She onboards the new board members. And as I mentioned, she's our artistic director. Her time commitment varies, but she said typically it's one or two hours a week. That's not too bad. What she said she enjoys about the position is troubleshooting issues that come up. And she feels like she gets a bird's eye view of what's going on, seeing all that, um, like the email traffic. And she also probably touches every, um, has touches with all the other positions as well. Thank you, Sue. All right, presentations. <clears throat> so I'm back again, it's Fran, and I have been the presentations director for, this is my third year. Um, the top responsibilities, basically I arrange and confirm presentations for the weekly meetings. And, you know, we have a few meetings where we have the intro show, or something else, but generally that's probably about 50 meetings a year. And we have weekly presentations that run 30, 45 minutes like that. Um, when, I have, when I've confirmed a presentation, I get information from the presenter and I post the description about it on the website. And I also communicate with, um, with Sue and publicity and with Jody about it um, so that we get information out so that people can know what the presentation is going to be. And then most people know if you're on our e-group, you get a weekly email from me telling you all about what the, um, 
what the presentation is going to be about. And then you get to see me on Tuesday meetings introducing the speaker. Now, that probably sounds like a lot. Um, 50 meetings is a lot. I probably spend one to two hours a week on it. Plus, I generally attend the weekly meetings. But if I'm on a trip, you know, somebody else does the introduction and covers for me. Um, board members help each other out a lot because we're rovers. So we all rove. We go on trips. Um, I um, One of the things that's fun about this is just brainstorming ideas. Many people who are rovers have sat with me, you know, at the bar or at a picnic table on some trip. And I said, what, what ideas do you have about presentations? And, um, and a lot of rovers have some great ideas and are willing to present. Um, so I get to do that. And I also, I have outdoors friends who aren't rovers, God forbid. And I talk to them about all of this stuff too. And I, and I get to just think about what would I like to hear things about? I started this position officially March 1st of 2020, which means that we went from having in-person meetings to within a month we were doing <clears throat> weekly Zoom meetings. And that opened up the door in some ways. I mean, it, it limited us for meeting, but it opened up the door to presenters. And we've had presenters from all over the US and Canada and, and, uh, and Mexico and actually one from South America. And, and I get to just brainstorm and come up with ideas or when I read about some interesting outdoors thing, um, I, I just spend some time Googling and finding people. Most of the work that I do is at whatever odd hours I feel like it. And because I send a lot of emails and I, um, and I look at stuff online and I try to think of interesting ideas. So it's either hanging out, talking with people or it's whatever hour I want to do it. Spending, spending time online coming up with ideas. One of the cool things about it is that when I ask people who aren't rovers, a lot of them are familiar with the rovers and they love the rovers. And so people are really amenable to doing presentations because they know about us. They know that we built the border route trail and they know that we do these conservation things or they see rovers on activities. And so they love it. If they haven't heard of the Rovers, I, I encourage them to check out our website and our YouTube channel. And they come back and they're impressed with the wide range of things that we do and what a cool club it is. So it's really cool that so many people love the Rovers and it makes my job easier. Because you can do this any hour, it's convenient for a night owl. Many people in, in the Rovers you know, might have noticed me sending off emails or doing something at various odd hours. Um, so really you can work around whatever your schedule is to do it. And, and the wide range of presentations and ideas is really pretty cool. So that's, that's what I like about it. I have, this is my third board position. I spent two years um, as the equipment locker director and I spent three years as a director at large and then I took over presentations from Barry. The one other thing I will tell you is that Barry gave me this wonderful Excel spreadsheet when I started out that had a lot of ideas and also had the history of Rover presentations and contact information for presenters going back like, I don't know, 12 years, going back a long time. And I drew on a lot of those ideas um, things that had been interesting topics in the past, but also things that he had brainstormed and hadn't been able to put into action. Whoever takes over this position um, in March, I will have things scheduled through May. I will have all kinds of ideas that you can draw from with contact information. So you won't just be starting from square one. Um, and and uh, and really, it's not uh, it's not that intimidating, and it's a pretty fun position. So that's it for presentations. All right, all right, Brian, and thank you for your last three years worth of awesome presentations. Um, next up is our database 
administrator Bob Jarvis. Yes. So this is a this is a pretty uh, low key and uh, sporadic type of position. Uh, the the uh, main responsibilities are to provide a report of membership fees recorded during the month to the treasurer for reconciling the bank statement and uh, monthly summary of members joining during the month to the board. And uh, the more interesting part is, is occasional requests for uh, demographic information. So I've, I've done a few of those uh, where somebody wants to know what's the current demographic makeup of the club uh, as a, you know and how how we're spread out among various age groups how many members we have and that sort of thing and it really it uh, i said three hours per month but it's it's usually less than that it's an hour or two per month uh what i like about it is uh the flexible schedule because all the work is done via the internet and via via email and it uses my hard-earned computer skills. Uh, so you do, uh, that, that is one, one thing that you do need is some familiarity with uh, some type of spreadsheet, whether it's Excel or numbers on Apple, or even you could even do it with uh, Google Sheets. Uh, but you do need to have some experience with generating reports and consolidating numbers on, on some type of spreadsheet system to get uh, these reports and you need to be able to shuffle the columns around and and that sort of thing. And, and one of the other things I do is uh, sometimes when I'm reviewing the data is I will work with the uh, database administrator because I occasionally run across duplicate entries or uh, you know people who have, joined rovers but have something wrong with their with their data it's incomplete or there's duplicate entries or things like that so that's uh, that's about it okay all right well thank you bob membership with Lori and laura hello um yeah membership director is a pretty easy low-key job also um we process new memberships that is they come in we make sure we, you know people are signing up correctly if if there's a problem i usually get a hold of them if it didn't go through or whatever um which isn't very often uh and people will sometimes ask about the club or ask about ask questions to to the membership before joining and it's really interesting some of the questions you get and then to be able to answer and then see them join a little while later it's like yay <laughs> um and then uh, just update the uh membership emails and that's monitor and update the automated membership emails i'm not sure what that means who put that in there zoo <laughs> i think um but i just i just keep a, a the memberships together um, at the meeting, I will come, you know, bring the total of people who rejoined, uh, renewed or, or new members. And a lot of times we'll look at those to see uh, if, if a certain publicity event brought in a lot of new members or the backpacking program brought in new members and that kind of thing. So it's just interesting for us. But other than that, it's, not a lot of work on the board. Um, so what I enjoy is is uh, being that first contact. It's always it's always fun to talk to people interested in the outdoors, uh, helping some uh, helping with some of the issues and learning more about our our website because I work with Jody quite a bit on doing some things. Like this week, I just finished putting up a bunch of. Uh, backpacking recipes and that kind of thing. I'm just kind of doing these odd jobs because I don't have um, too much time committed to membership. And um, Laura, do you have anything else you want to add? No, I think you've got it, Laura. Thank you. 
No. Okay. And then uh, working with the board on group projects, and that is what I do mostly. <laughs> That's it. All right. Okay. Well, thank you both. Um, we'll move on to the equipment director. Yes, I'm David Byrne, the, the gear, direct, gear director. And uh, I've, uh, I started out as the assistant director. Uh, the top three responsibilities. Uh, so anybody who requests equipment, that message comes to me. Uh, and then uh, you know, I can arrange to meet somebody at the gear locker. Uh, the gear locker is located by Como and 280 in St. Paul. Um, I looked through the messages I've been getting and uh, actually the last couple of years, about 65 and 66 requests each year, but not every request necess necessitates a trip to the gear locker. A lot of them, you know, there might, I probably make a couple dozen trips to the gear locker a year. Uh, and, uh, uh, so what I enjoy about the position, you know, I, I'm retired, so I have time to go, you know, uh, to meet almost any time that uh, people want to meet there. And I also live 10 minutes away. Uh, I think that's an advantage. And like Lori said, for membership director, I meet a lot of new rovers. A lot of the gear has been going out to people in the beginner backpacking program and, uh, uh, and everyone appreciates the benefit. Uh, you know, some people can't believe, you know, for you join the Rovers, $25 a year, and you get to use, you know, some pretty good gear at, at no charge. You know, some people think they have to rent it. No, you don't have to rent it. Um, uh, so uh, I could also add that um, the assistant director uh, should be somebody I can coordinate uh, vacations with. Uh, so if I'm not around, somebody's available for, uh, um, uh, you know, dispersing gear to people who request it. Uh, and also, uh, uh, the assistant and me will, uh, in the spring do an inventory of the gear. And I should also add, this could be a big year for the gear director because we are considering uh, moving the location, uh, something the board uh, uh, would have to decide. And uh, uh, so that uh, it could be a big year and uh, uh, somebody uh, um, uh, you know, who wants to have an impact on the gear, this might be a good year to, uh, to come on board. So I think that's all I have to say. Well, and David, you are staying on next year, so you're really just looking for someone. You're hoping to have an assistant. Um, yes, uh, and, and if they want to challenge me for gear director, it'll be a, a, a tough campaign. You'll see <laughs> uh, ads on TV. <laughs> so, okay. I would be happy to be the assistant if somebody else wanted to be the director. <laughs> All righty. Thanks, David. We have a recording secretary, Jill, and uh, Jill, are you on? Yes, I am. Hello, everyone. Nice to see you. I am lucky enough to be the secretary because it is a, it's a good fit for me today in my job um, and the way things are going. And so I'm happy to share a little bit about the position. Aside from the board work, that we do collectively. And, and I don't want to minimize that because there is a lot of like, really great discussion that happens not only during the board meeting, but also in um, emails throughout. So it's a, it's a powerhouse of a group, but it's a light lift individually. And uh, the time commitment is, it's about six hours a month or there's some planning time. It's very, scheduled which works really well for me right now in the place I am uh, with work and other commitments I have and that I always know when I'm going to need to 
uh, put a little time in, and it's going to usually be right before the board meeting. During the board meeting, that six hours definitely counts my attendance at the board meeting. And then afterward as well, just um, getting the notes together and sending those out and seeing if others have edits and things like that. And um, it's, but it, what works for me and maybe for some of you that are considering board work is there really aren't any surprises. It's very time scheduled. You can put it on your calendar pretty much for the entire year when you when you join, you know when you're going to need to, to um, you know, add a little time. You always can volunteer for other board activities, but it's pretty simple. I'm someone that learns by taking notes. It's a, it's a learning tool for me, so it's natural that I take notes anyway, so it's not a big deal to just try to capture those. And, and also, I will say the board all the board members are, they're so compassionate if I have to ask about, you know, details or can we go back a minute, even in the board meeting or even after the board meeting and ask, you know, I missed that part. Can you help me fill in? Everybody is very nice about sending information that you may have missed. So it, it, it's not, it's not high pressure like it would be at a, at a city council or some other kind of level. Um, so it's, it's very nice. It's a good group to work with. Um, our current president is so easy to work with so that, you know, that's lovely. And I and actually, I know enough about the other board members that I think all the, even the past presidents, I'm sure you would have the same experience. I really appreciate the changeover system that the board has here. I was a little reluctant about a one-year board term, even though I, it sounded really appealing to only have a one-year commitment, which I think is really unique and, and lovely because our worlds change all the time. So just being able to commit to one year is, you know, is very logical and I'm stubborn. Like I'm going to, I'm going to be there for this year, no matter what. And if things come up, as you heard before, people are willing to fill in, but it is a pretty minimal commitment. And, um, and I like that people will help transition. I had a great transition from the last person. And then really other board members have stepped up and helped me if I had any questions. And there also have been all the templates like you don't have to format anything. <laughs> it might be intimidating for some people. Just everything is there. It's just filed in a nice Dropbox system. It's very easy. And when you get done with your stuff, you just put it in the system and and it's there. So it's been it's been really nice and very easy. I'm not going to continue only because of some per personal commitments that are taking a little bit more of my time, but. I do look forward to jumping back on the board whenever I can uh, to give back because it's a, it's a great group. And, uh, and knowing that maybe I'll only have to take a year off and I can be back involved is, you know, it's really attractive. So those are some of my thoughts about the whole experience. Well, thank you, Joe. It's been great to work with you. Um, all righty, we have a money person. Stephanie. Hello, everyone. Is everybody still awake? I'm Stephanie. I saw one yawn out there. And I agree with Jill and what a lot of the other folks on the board have said. I really enjoy working on the board. I wanted to do it so that I could get to know people better. And I definitely have. Um, Sue mentioned something about having a bird's eye view with the the web administrator feels that way. And I feel like that too. I get to see where all the money is going, where it's coming from. And that's really energy floating around the, the club in the form of, of money. And I feel like it's a great way to kind of take the temperature of the organization. What does it value? And I wanted to do service at the board level because I value the Rover so much. There's an activity that I can jump into just about every day of the week. And I value that so much. 
as, you know, a solo practitioner working out of home, out of my home. It's so important. So I do all the basic financial stuff. I am not a CPA. I am not a fancy Excel person. I just do my family finances. And I found that that translated to doing the Rover's treasure position, along with just the fact that I have a background in project management. So I'm used to looking at financials and and, um, income statements. I maintain the bank account at Huntington Bank. I do the monthly financial report that's given out to all the board members. And I coordinate the annual budget with the directors. And Stacy, I'm working with Carrie right now, the previous treasurer. So getting up to speed, this will be my first time doing budgeting with Rover. So I will be in contact with you here ASAP, one thing at a time. And the time commitment is five to 10 hours a month. That includes the two hour commitment the first Monday of the month for the board meeting. I am busiest during extravaganza spring and fall. As you can imagine, there are folks who need reimbursements for different expenses that they've incurred at the event. Also, um, probably this budgeting process will take up a little bit of my time as well. But it's really, it's fun doing the the reimbursements and everything is electronic. So there's really very little paper involved. There are a few paper checks that come my way, but otherwise I don't send out any paper checks. Everything is bank check or PayPal. So it's really slick. I hardly even have any supplies here, just literally my computer and a calculator. That's pretty much what I use. Let's see what I enjoy about the position. Yes, I love interacting with the other board members, the the members who come to me who need a reimbursement or have a question, participating through service um, and because I value it so much. And it's also just a natural fit for my skills and experience, uh, along with a lot of folks, we're all busy and for this, time on the board, I decided I just want to do something that would be fairly easy for me because, um, you know, it's just, I'm doing this anyway for my home finances. And so it just makes sense to do it for Rovers as well. And yeah, it's just, it's actually a little bit easier than I thought it would be. I had a really great experience getting trained in with Carrie. And when there's, no extravaganza event in the spring or fall. It's really pretty mellow. There's maybe 20 to 30 transactions that come through the bank statement every month. So it's really not even that much to manage. So it's really been a a pleasure and a real pleasant surprise to be able to serve in this way. And I'll turn it over to the next person. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Stephanie. All right, we have um, trips and then president, and then we're almost done. So, Jen. Hello. So, I've, this is my second venture in trips director and vice president. Um, I announced trips at Tuesday meetings, as you've heard today. Um, if I'm not available, someone can volunteer. It's just not rocket rocket science. Um, if there was any any time that Stacy couldn't. Um, lead the board meeting, I would have to step in, which it's never happened. Um, I do provide trip coordinator training. It's written into the bylaws, I believe, that at least one trip coordinator workshop happens every year. I've done two each year. Um, And I also get to publish the trips that the members submit. So a lot of times, People think as trips director, I'm coordinating all the trips. I'm like, no, I'm just publishing them. Um, So I'll get a trip that comes in. I get notified through email. And I read through the trip. I edit out the name because I don't put the last name of the trip coordinator in there. And I just make sure that the trip makes sense. If not, I do a little bit of editing. And if it's a bigger change, I do contact the coordinator, just letting them them know um and then I publish the trip so it's 
super easy. It's all automated through the website. Um, I average three to four hours weekly, um, but that's including the Tuesday meetings, the board meetings, and kind of averaging out the trip coordinator stuff. Um, I enjoy the position. Um, I get a preview of the trips that are coming up and I get to share my knowledge about coordinating trips. I've, I work through the documentation. I've gotten input from a lot of the experienced trip coordinators as well. And we've come up with some documentation that works really well. Um, and I just ensure that the trips are formatted similarly. So on the website, it's very consistent. Um, so if someone has this big long title, I'm going to shorten it just because we just don't want the big header to be huge and then the trip description being small and everything like that. But it's it's a good position. It's it's something if you don't, you know, in the winter, in the falls, winter and spring, we're doing it over Zoom in the um, summer go to the meetings and read the trips. So I'm preparing slides for Stacy right before the meeting. Um, and I don't mind speaking in front of people. So that is it. Okay. All right. Well, Jen, thank you. And thank you for all your work over the last several years. Um, so last position that we're talking about is president. And uh, I am serving in that role this year. Um, this is my fifth year as president. Um, I've done it two previous terms. Um, and the, the president is essentially the CEO for Rovers. Um, that, that person is responsible for the general maintenance management of the club. So that includes uh, working with the treasurer to set the next year's budget, ensuring that we're doing everything that's required by the state. As a not-for-profit, there are certain things we have to do, some paperwork that we have to um, fill, uh, submit every year. Um, we have to arrange an annual business review. And so um, we need to have someone outside the board looking at our um, uh, what we've done over the past year, um, our finances and and how we're handling our finances and so on to make sure everything's above board and you know the treasurer isn't uh there's stephanie um you know siphoning it off from the hunting and bank which um wouldn't happen but um it, annual business review is something that's done every year um we make sure i make sure that we have a slate of nominees for the next board year and um, so you'll be hearing more about that. And I think Sue talked about that a little bit, a bit ago. We will be starting um, to put together a, nom a nominations committee and um, looking for a slate of nominees for next year's board um, and, then, and then voting on that. We'll also, for fun, we'll also be um, thinking about how we wanna celebrate our 70th birthday. We're going to be turning 70 in 2024. So some of you are around for our 60th. And so uh, the board will um, need to be thinking about what we want to do for our 70th. Um, I also run the week, uh, weekly meeting or I, I do the welcome and on Tuesdays and run the monthly board of directors meeting. Um, the and one of the things that I have done in the past, and that Jen kind of alluded to this, is that there have been times when I haven't attended the Tuesday meeting. Um, and so then I arrange for other board members to fill in. And that's never, that's never been a problem. People are always so, so um, eager and, and helpful to step in when something has to be done. Time commitment, I put three hours a week, five hours on a board meeting week. That does include the, the weekly meetings and the board, the board meetings. So without the meeting time, it's probably a couple hours a week, um, checking email, 
um, doing the slides for the, the Tuesday show, et cetera. Um, it's very doable. Um, what do I enjoy? Um, several of you have already talked about this, but um, it's an opportunity to give back to the club and its members. Um, I'm passionate, like so many um, other people are, about this club and what it um, brings to our lives. And so it's a real pleasure to be able to um, make sure that this club keeps going forward. Um, on the, as part of the board, we're also part of charting its future and helping to bring about change and improvements. So um, some of you might have been involved or heard about our, our future search. We did this a couple of years ago, and um, it, was, it was really kind of interesting. It was um, December of 2019, and we were, uh, one of the things that came up was wouldn't it be neat if we could do some of our meetings virtually and have people like from other states be able to listen to our programs? And fast forward three or four months and we were on Zoom because of COVID. So, but we were thinking about that already in, in 2019. We were like, you know, how can we take advantage of the technology and bring our bring our club to the, the wider world. Um, and then finally, I get to work with my Rovers friends. You know, the board meetings, these meetings, I get to talk with my Rovers friends or, you know, potentially people who are gonna become Rovers. Um, we're all committed and we're passionate about the club. And so it's, it's really a great way, as Stephanie said, to act on my values. So it's, um, it's a, you know, if I'm going to volunteer for something, this is a great way to volunteer. So um, you will see this um, slide um, come out in an email in the next couple months. It's our, our top 10 reasons to volunteer and serve on the, uh, serve on the board. Um, and I would actually um, say it's fun is, you know, it, it really is. It's fun to do your different jobs um, and interact with, with your fellow board members. You get to know people, especially if you're a newer member. Um, you get to know this subgroup of people on the board really well. Um, but if you're, say, um, events, you get to know a lot of people. <laughs> um, in a, in a short amount of time. Um, you get to do your part and give back to the club. And um, I would say number seven, we do need you. Um, we are a volunteer led club. We've been a volunteer led club for almost 70 years. And, um, you know, it, it wouldn't be here if it wasn't for all those members from the past. It's uh, for those of you who are um, looking to um, work on your resume. And it's great for your resume. President of the Minnesota Rovers, <laughs> um, board member of the Minnesota Rovers. You know, it, it looks good on a resume. Um, break out of your rut um, and, you know, be kind of be part of what's going on. You you know, on the board, you hear about things before any of the members do. So, you know, if if we're talking about the 70th um, celebration, you know, you, you'll be involved right from the start um, to hear what we're thinking about. And and you'll be able to give your two cents and, you know, say what you, you think we should do. Um, you can show your gratitude to being part of the club. Um, hone your leadership skills. Um, I, this is kind of connected with um, the resume, but um, it's a really great way to practice your leadership. I mean, this group is so forgiving. At the your fellow board members, you know, they're your friends, so you can hone your leadership skills, and um, it's it's a really friendly way to do that. Um, Sue, I think, talked about the free membership. So if you come to more than half the meetings, you get 
that year's membership or your next year's membership will be comped. Um, and then the, the number one reason to join is without members, without the volunteers, rovers wouldn't exist. So um, we hope that um, as you've been listening, that you maybe see yourself in one or a couple of these positions. And um, we would love to talk about it. So 